Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. Today I will show you demonstrations how to configure SSH or Secure Shell. This is a packet tracer 2.2.1.4. So on this uh, activity we're going to see how to secure password. That's part one. O second objective is to encrypt communication. While third objective is to verify SSH implementation. So for this, I'm going to use a packet tracer 2.2.1.4. So if I go and find my files, they are located on this folder. So 2.2.1.4. I'll double click to open that file. Okay, when activity open, you get a window that says uh, to fill the user profile. But for this uh, task or activity, we're not going to fill anything. I'm just going to cancel from that. Now that's a uh, that's your activity configuring SSH. But well, underneath, we have a packet tracer activity which just keeps count of timer, how long we've been running this packet tracer, and little description what you're meant to do. So from this activity, we can see the IP address for the switch one and PC one. And again, the objectives, what we expected to learn from this activity. A small description on the background, it says that SSH should replace the telnet for management connection. Reason is because telnet is very insecure Everything is being sent from the two devices is sending clear text. So for that reason, we need uh, something to encrypt it. And uh, to achieve that, we use SSH. So definitely, especially in production, you shouldn't be using Telnet. You should be using SSH. Now, um, part one was uh, to secure the password. So it does say here that using the command prompt on PC1, Telnet to switch one. OK, so I'll open the PC1 and go to command prompt, minimize uh, the packet tracer activity. I'm just gonna put the PC that icon. I'm just gonna move the window, the PC window correctly. Okay, it says using the command prompt, which we are in now, telnet to S1. So I need to type telnet, and then the IP address of S1 was 10.10.10.2. So 102 Okay, now he's asking me, he's challenging me with the password. And it says here the user exec and privilege exec password are Cisco. So this is a user exec, so I'll type Cisco. I'm in the user mode, I can see that from the greater than sign. And then to move on to privilege mode, I type enable. Enable. And it's Cisco again. Okay, when you type the passwords on, on Cisco, you don't see the characters or like uh, stars or anything. It's just like hidden how many characters you type. But you are typing, I'm I type the characters Cisco twice. So it, B says, save the current configuration so that any mistake you might make can be rever reversed by uh, toggling the power for the switch. So it means like, okay, if we save the configuration here, if we make any mistakes, we can revert back to uh, correct configuration by switching the uh, switch off and then a power cycle off and then on again. So copy running config to startup config. Okay, destination file name startup config. If I'm happy with this, I just press enter. I don't need to type anything here. So press I'm happy. I want to call it startup config. Press enter. And it said building configuration and it's okay. He it saved it. Part one, the section C says show the current configuration and note that passwords are in plain text. Okay, and then enter the commands that encrypts plain text passwords. So if I show the configuration, the command was show running config. Enter. You can see the password here is Cisco. It's in plain text. If I move all the way down, so I'm pressing enter one line at a time, or I can press spacebar was like a page down. You can see all my passwords are in clear text. Cisco, Cisco, that's a clear text. It says here, enter the command that encrypts plain text passwords. Okay, that is, if I go to config, global configuration mode, configure terminal, and then service, password, password, encryption. What this command is going to do is going to encrypt all the passwords that are not encrypted by default. So press enter. Okay, that command has uh, correctly been applied. As we can see there, the completion is 20 out of 100. So we have completed 20% of this activity. And then I want to see 
verify the passwords are encrypted. So we can see before it used to be Cisco. Now if I run show running config again, show running config, now you can see the password has been encrypted. This was a neighbor password. I go all the way to the end. I can see the VTY lines has been encrypted and there was nothing on the console. So yeah, the, the second part of the VTY line has been encrypted as well. Excellent. So now we, we finished part one. So we're going to move to part two and the communication, encrypt communication. So here, set the IP domain name and generate security keys or secure keys. First, it is generally not safe to use Telnet. We learned that because data is transmitted in plain text. Therefore, use SSH whenever it's available. Configure the domain name to be netacad.pka. So we have to go to global configuration mode. Configure, configure, terminal. And then IP domain name netacad.pka. Okay, excellent. Now that we type that command, that we can see the completion has changed from 40 to 100. So excellent, we're moving on, we're moving very good. Now secure keys are needed to encrypt data. To generate the RSA keys using 1024 key length. So we need to generate the keys. The command is crypto key generate and then RSA. So we are generating our certificate that we're going to issue to a whoever wants to connect to us through SSH. Press enter. Now it's going to ask us how much the key, how many bits in the modules. So 512 is saying that is a default. So, but our requirement says we have to type 1024. So I'm going to type 1024. Press enter. And it's generated fine. Now we move into step two. It says create an SSH user and reconfigure the VT1 lines to use SSH only access. So we need to create an uh, administrator with the password of Cisco. So local database of administrator. So in here, we're going to create a local router database. And we're only going to have one user. That user, user name is administrator. Administrator. And the password, password is going to be Cisco. As it says there, Cisco. OK, we, we added that user in our database, administrator, the password of Cisco. And then it says, um, configure the VTY lines to check the local username database for login credentials. OK, so if we go to VTY lines, so line VTY 0 to 15 here, and then login local. That says, check our local database now for the passwords when you're trying to log in. OK, press Enter. And then, and to, to only allow SSH for remote access. OK, so we need to type transport input SSH. So that now we are allowing any incoming transport to be SSH only, not Telnet at all. OK, and then we remove the existing VTY line password. So no password Cisco. I think it was Cisco. Yeah. OK, done. So as you can see, the completion is 100 out of 100. We can check it even further. So check results. If we do check results, it's going to show us what was expected from us to be completed. So assessment items. And here, the IP domain is being completed. The modulus bits is being completed. Completed. We have uh, added the keys, crypto keys. We encrypted our password by service password encryption command. We created local username and on our database. And then we told the VTY lines to use uh, login local, use our local database when you log in. We deleted the old passwords. And then we said the transport input should be SSH instead of Telnet. So close that. OK, and let me just maximize this again. And then if I go at the end, we need to verify it. So part three is verify SSH implementation. Exit the Telnet session and attempt to log back in using Telnet. Uh, OK, so we need to exit the Telnet session and we're trying to log back in using Telnet. And it says the attempt should fail. So if I do exit, exit, exit again. And now I'm in the PC, right? So if I try to Telnet again, Telnet 10.10.10.2, .10 .10 I think it was the IP address of the switch. 
So I go and check it out. Yep, 10, 10, 10, 2. Okay, so if I tell that, this should fail. And it does. It does fail. Close by foreign host. So attempt to log in using SSH. Type SSH and press enter without any parameters to reveal the command's usage instructions. Okay, so I type SSH and press enter. It says to, you need to type SSH for to use SSH. You need to type SSH minus L and the username and then the target or the IP address. So minus L, this is not one. Lots of people are confused with one, but it's actually L. So SSH minus L. Yeah, so top of the capital letter, L. Uh, needs, it needs to be in lower letters, so L. And the username is administrator, so administrator. Administrator. And the target is the IP address of the switch, which is 10.10.10.2. And as you can see, we have a connection to our switch, and it's challenging us with the password. Password was Cisco, and we are in the user mode. 